I'm now going to solve the same problem using two different methods. So the first method will be relative motion, and the second method will use the method of instantaneous centers of zero velocity. Okay, so let's get started. I'll switch over to the desktop view. And this is a slider crank mechanism. These are very common in mechanical components because uh, it, 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 tra it, it transforms a rotating motion here at the crank to a sliding motion back and forth. So this is a slider crank mechanism. So rotating motion gets transformed to a back and forth motion. So uh, this side is constrained from on the top and the bottom, so it can only move left and right. And this side is rotating around this pin at A. We have A, B, and C, and we're looking to find the velocity at C at this moment. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is find the velocity of B. And the velocity of B, we can use our cross product method where we have omega AB cross the vector from A to B. So that's what we're gonna use here. And omega AB we're given as two radians per second, and that's actually in the K direction. So if we use our coordinate system X, Y here, that is actually uh, positive in the K direction using the right-handed rule. If we put our thumb in the Z axis direction, that motion is curling using our right hand in that, in that same way. So that is a positive um, rotation there. So WAB and written in, or I'm sorry, WAB, Omega AB, it's been a long day. Omega AB written in this fashion is a vector which is zero, zero, and then in the K we said that was positive and that's two. All right. RAB can be written as in the x direction from a to b that is 0.8 cosine 45 we have 0.8 cosine 45 and then in the y direction we have 0.8 sine 45 and in the z we have zero right this is just in the xy plane so we don't have to worry about that. And performing this cross product here, I don't think we need to go through the method to do that, but let's see what I have here. That looks like it comes out to be negative 1.6 sine 45 degrees in the i direction and in the, in the j direction that is 1.6 cosine 45 degrees and make sure you get the sine convention correct and the vector here sh should be pointed out this way so that would be a positive y and in the negative x and that's what we have here so that's good a good start now we need to use our relative motion equation where we have the velocity of c is equal to the velocity of b plus the velocity of C with respect to B. So we know B is rotating already, but if we know how fast BC is rotating, we can add the velocity of B to the rotation of BC, and we should get the velocity down here at C. So the velocity of C with respect to B, let's work on that. We just solved for the velocity of B here. We have that already. What we're looking for is the velocity of C with respect to B. That can be written as omega BC cross R from B to C. So how fast it's rotating around B here. So something like this. And if we have BC, we, can ha we have this whole equation but we don't know this angular velocity yet. So we'll need to solve for that. So let's keep going. So the velocity of CB, or the C with respect to B, it will be zero, zero, 
omega bc we don't know this magnitude yet so that's why i'm just going to put omega bc in there as a magnitude but we know it's rotating in the k direction either positive or negative if we get a negative we know it's it's counterclockwise and then we're going to cross that with r bc and let's take a look what that ends up being so we're position vector from b to c that looks like it's a positive one cosine 30 in the x direction and a negative one sine 30 in the y direction because we're moving downward as we go from b to c in the y direction so let's make sure i have that right so one cosine 30 in the i direction and negative one sine 30 in the j direction and zero in the in the k here so solving this equation for vcb uh, velocity of c with respect to b that comes out to omega bc this magnitude we don't know sine 30 degrees in the i direction and omega bc cosine 30 degrees in the j direction if we perform this cross product here so now we have everything we need we haven't solved for omega bc yet but we can use this equation our original equation here or i'm sorry not that equation um, the velocity of c equation here so we have the velocity of c is equal to and i'm going to separate these into i and j components the velocity of b and we have the velocity of b which is up here i and j components so i'm going to write these vertical 1.6 sine 45 in the i direction and 1.6 1 1.6 cosine 45 in the j direction and we're adding this velocity of c with respect to b to that so in the x direction we have omega bc sine 30 degrees and omega bc cosine 30 degrees or the j direction all right so this actually comes out to two equations here we have the equations in the x direction on the top and equations for the y direction in the bottom but where do we go from here make sure i have those equations written around right it looks looks right well we know the velocity of c in the y direction so let's go back up to our diagram the velocity of c in the y direction is zero because it's constrained both on the top and the bottom so c cannot move in the y direction so we can set that equation's velocity equal to zero so let's do that so the velocity of c in the y direction we're going to use the bottom part because that's the j direction here so we have 1.6 cosine 45 degrees plus omega bc cosine 30 degrees and we said that is equal to zero and doing this we can solve for omega bc and that is equal to negative 1.306 radians per second so what does that indicate well that indicates that b to c is rotating in the negative k direction which would be a clockwise direction so if this is moving this way we would assume that this is moving this way and vc is moving to the left that all makes sense so now the only thing left to do is to figure out the velocity of c moving to the left is we plug this back into our x equation here so we have velocity of c in the x direction is equal to negative 1.6 sine 45 degrees plus omega bc which is this negative number negative 1.306 sine 30 degrees and that comes out to be 
Why don't I have that written down? I do. 1.78 meters per second. And that comes out negative, so we know that it is to the left, so the negative I direction. So this is moving to the left at 1.78 meters per second. And that is the solution to this problem. We are now going to solve the same slider crank problem using the instantaneous center of zero velocity. So this is more of a geometrical method and there are less cosines and sines running around which makes the calculation easier. Some of you might like this method a little bit better. Okay, so to complete this, train's ripping by Mount Vernon right now. So uh, we know the velocity of B here. The velocity of B is going to be perpendicular to the vector from A to B. And why is that? So this is perpendicular. Why is that? Well, that is because it's pinned here and it's rotating around here at two radians per second. It's the same as if this was a disc here. And we know that the velocity at the tip, that, that would be the tangential velocity there. So the velocity of B here is equal to two radians times 0.8. So the magnitude of that is 1.6 omega times r meters per second. So om omega is two, radius is 0.8, 1.6 in this direction. And in the slider mechanism down here, we know that it's the velocity must be to the left or the right. And it doesn't matter which way we draw the arrow, it'll come out the same either way. But we know it's not up and down at all. So we're going to draw a vector that is to the left there. Okay. Since we know those two, the direction of those two vectors, the next step of the procedure is to draw perpendicular lines to each of these velocity vectors. So at point C, that's easy. That's just a straight vertical line going up. And for B here, we know the velocity of B, we're gonna draw something perpendicular, which will be at a 45 degree angle. And where those points meet right there, that's the inst instantaneous center of, uh, of zero velocity. Right here, this whole system has a velocity of zero, and we can assume that this whole system is rotating about that point as well at this very moment. If it moves slightly, it's no longer true. We would have to find a new instantaneous center of zero velocity. But at this moment, this is true. So what, where do we go from here? Well, it's, it's kind of a geometry problem from here. So I'm gonna draw a triangle to represent this upper side here. So we have something like vertical line, and we know that this is one meter here, this distance from B to C. And this is our instantaneous center up here. What are our angles? Well, we know that this is 45 degrees right there from horizontal, from horizontal because it's the same angle as this. And we know that this angle, if, if this is 30 down here, this internal angle is 90 minus 30, so that is 60 degrees down here. And I believe that makes this angle 30 degrees. Okay. So this whole internal angle is 45 plus 30, which is 75 degrees. So I'm just going to write that 75 degrees there. And 75 degrees, then that makes, if the sum of all internal angles of a triangle are, are sum up to 180 degrees, that makes this 30 degrees up here. Okay, so we have this triangle set up, and I'm going to label the sides of this triangle X and Y, because we don't know these side lengths, but we do know that this is one. And now to solve this problem, we can use the method or the law of signs. 
So remember the law of sines. So we have something like the sine of 30. You can write 30. Sine of 30 divided by the opposite length, which is 1, equals the sine of 60 degrees over the opposite here, or I'm sorry, the opposite of 60, which is x. So here we can solve for x, and I have this written down somewhere. So x is equal to 1.2247. That is x here. And we can do the same sort of thing with to solve for y. So sine of 30 divided by 1 is the equal to the sine of 75 degrees divided by y. This is 75, there's y over here. And y comes out to be 1.36603. Okay. Now what we need to do is find omega about the instantaneous center. So this is this omega about the instantaneous center, which actually comes out to be omega BC. This is actually the, this will equal the rotation of this beam here, B to C. And what's, how do we solve for that? Well, omega BC, all right, I guess we can write IC, IC times this radius, 1.2247, must equal the velocity of B. So now we're using this point here. So we have omega times this R must equal 1.6. So omega IC comes out to be 1.3064 radians per second. And that's exactly what we found when we did the method of uh, relative velocities previously. We found that omega BC is equal to this. Now, what do we do from here to find the velocity of C? Well, the velocity of C is going to be equal to omega IC, what we just found, times that radius, this R, which is 1.36603. One point, oh, I just forgot it, 36603. And we plug this in here, and we have the velocity of C, which is equal to 1.78 meters per second to the left. And that is our answer, and that's the exact same solution we got using the other method. So whatever method you choose, they both come out the same. A lot of people prefer this instantaneous center method because it's less calculation, but it's a little more difficult to grasp. To go through this once again, we find the velocity's direction first off, and then we draw lines perpendicular to those velocity vectors. So draw these two lines, and where they intersect, that's the instantaneous center. And then we need to find omega about the instantaneous center. And once we do that, we can use the radius arms to find any point on this diagram. We can draw arbitrary vectors from the instantaneous center to any point on these beams, and we would be able to find the velocity vector.